Hi and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do my eToro portfolio update for September 2021. This has been a pretty bad month for us and the general market overall. Historically, September is known as the weakest month of the year in the stock market. But on the other hand, this is great because it's provided a lot of buying opportunities and I've been sitting on quite a bit of cash. So I took advantage of this to buy lots of stocks at discounted prices. Usually I'd start with positions I've closed out, but there was nothing this month, but I'll follow on from this and show the cash I've added. Then I'll move on to my current portfolio and talk about what stocks I currently hold and what stocks I've bought this month. If it's your first time watching my channel, then my name's Ollie and I've been an IT consultant developing software solutions for the finance industry since 2008. And I've been actively investing in the stock market since 2016. If you enjoy this video, then I'd really appreciate an early thumbs up as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that my content can reach more people. Also, please subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified of the latest videos as I upload new content every week on personal finance, investing, and how to reach financial freedom. Now, I do apologize if you can hear that in the background, it sounds like someone has decided to literally just start having a rave somewhere down the road for me so if you can hear the bass in the background i do apologize and there's not really much i can do about it so please note the information in this video is not intended to be investment advice and if you want investment advice you should seek a licensed professional also past performance is not indicative of future results if you're not already signed up to eToro and decide to sign up while watching this video, then I have an affiliate link down below this video, which if you sign up using it, then I will get a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support this channel. So I apologize, this video is a little later than usual as I was on holiday up till last weekend. So this means I'm recording this a little bit late and the current date is the 9th of October. So some of these news stories will be from early October. So you can see here, there is nothing that I closed out this month, but you can see I deposited a considerable amount of cash over the course of September and early October to take advantage of all the buying opportunities. I think overall I have added about 5,500 US dollars into the account this month. Now, if you look at my stats, I was actually down 4.52% in the month of September, but I'm not hugely worried about this because of what I've been buying. And this is already starting to bounce back in October where we've got 2.3% so far. Um, also towards the end of the year, we often get a bit of a rally and I've been buying pretty solid companies. So inexperienced investors may have panicked in September when the market was going down, but you can put me on record if you want and come back and check this in a few months as I personally think that by the end of the year, most of these companies that I, I have invested in in September will be higher than where they are now, unless something goes horribly wrong with these companies. And I mean, even if I'm wrong, then if you look at the analysts price targets for the companies I've been buying, they are all well above where we are currently and price targets are set 12 months out. Now, I'm not saying we will have reached the bottom at the time of recording this video, but we were also due a bit of a healthy pullback. So all is good and I'm not personally worried. It's also impossible to time the bottom of the market. So I've been buying on the way down throughout September and then heaviest in the last weeks of September and early October. So moving on to my actual portfolio, starting with the worst to the best. Dash, this is down from the start of September. Um, overall, I'm down 65.29% on this. I've not added to this and won't be adding any. Like I've said in the past, it's a tiny position, so I'm not too fussed if this takes a while to recover. I'll just let this ride. A lot of the cryptos can be affected by the same news. And the major news in September was that China declared all crypto transactions illegal, which made cryptos drop. A lot of crypto struggled to make gains for the majority of the month, but some major crypto assets have rebounded in, in early October on the back of positive comments from the SEC's Gary Gensler, or Gensler, I don't know how you say his surname, where despite him saying investors in crypto products deserve protection, he also reiterated his support for exchange traded funds on futures linked to Bitcoin. This led to speculation that the US might approve the vehicle. Although the SEC has announced that they will not be making the decision on four Bitcoin ETFs until the end of the year. So next on my eToro portfolio update is BioNano Genomics. This is down from the start of September. Um, overall, I'm down 45.59% on this. Um, again, not, I've not added to this and I won't be adding any more anytime soon. You can generally see my conviction towards companies by the amount of money I have invested in them. I say generally because there is a couple which I'm generally looking for better additional entry points on. There has been a couple of cool stories for bio nanogenomics this month. So this article contains some big medicinal terms and I apologize if I'm saying them 
incorrectly. Let us know in the comments if you know the correct way to say it. So BioNano Genomics has a system called Sapphire for genome sequencing. And this month they put out an announcement saying they carried out the largest clinical research study to date evaluating optical genome mapping for analysis of fasciocapulohumeral muscular dystrophy and showed concordance with southern blot which i think is another technology and reduced turnaround time by 50 percent as compared to the traditional workflow and there was also another article this month saying that a study finds the combination of optical genome mapping and short red sequencing provides a comprehensive genome analysis for lung cancer samples and enables the discovery of new biomarkers and this study demonstrated the benefits of combining next generation sequencing and OGM data for discovery and translational research in cancer. So this is positive news. So next on my eToro portfolio update is XRP. Overall, I'm down 31.19%. This was down overall in September. XRP did rise towards the end of September, um, which you can see here. And this was due to a fake press release on law.com that claimed the SEC had dismissed a lawsuit against the company, but this is not actually the case. Either way, this has kept on rising since, probably off the back of the other cryptocurrencies rising. Uh, I'm in no rush to cash this out and I'm sure one day it will recover, so I will just let this one ride. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Coinbase. Uh, overall, I'm down 23.31% of this. This is only one share I hold of this. This was down overall in September. So Coinbase is generally correlated to cryptocurrency prices and Bitcoin was down for most of September. But there was additional news that affected Coinbase this month. Firstly, the SEC uh, announced they were going to sue Coinbase if it launched its new stable coin lending program. Then, as I mentioned earlier, China banned cryptocurrency transactions. And also as of October, Coinbase announced that hackers stole from the accounts of at least 6,000 customers, according to a breach notification letter sent by them to affected customers between March and May the 20th of this year. Apparently unauthorized third parties exploited a flaw in the company's SMS account recovery process to gain access to the accounts and transfer funds to crypto wallets not associated with Coinbase. Coinbase immediately fixed the flaw and have worked with these customers to regain control of their accounts and reimburse them for the funds they lost. So at least Coinbase are reimbursing people who've lost out. Now, it does sound like an intricate hack because the hackers needed to know uh, the email addresses, passwords, and phone numbers linked to the affected Coinbase accounts and have access to personal emails, the company said. And Coinbase said there was no evidence to suggest the information was obtained from the company. But either way, it's not really great news for Coinbase on that one. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Tattooed Chef. Overall, I'm down 17.85% on this one. This was down overall in September. As I mentioned last month, this got picked up by Wall Street Bets. And I mentioned in my last video, we may expect some volatility on this, which we did. As you can see, if you look at the chart here, it rocketed up towards the start of September and then it's come back down. All my positions went into positive on this for about a day or two. I was tempted to close them, but I didn't. This stock has come back down now. As of October, they announced six of its entree bowls are available in approximately 1,200 Publix supermarkets stores as of October the 1st. Um, if you live outside the US and you're wondering what is Publix, then it's one of the largest food retailers in the US. Uh, this adds to Tattooed Chef's availability in other shops such as Kroger, Albertsons, Sprouts Farmers Market, Target, Walmart, Costco and Sam's Club. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Corsair Gaming. I'm currently down 15.74% on this and overall this month this stock was down. This is currently tempting to buy more of at its current price point. Um, apparently this got picked up by Wall Street Bets at the end of August and early September, which caused the price to rise. Even if this was short lived, this is always good for a stock as it increases awareness of the company. Uh, they announced a partnership with Ubisoft to deliver immersive gaming for Far Cry 6 through Corsair's IQ ecosystem, which will light up and reflect in game events in real time. Plus, Opera GX, which is a gaming browser, also now supports Corsair's IQ. Andrew Paul, the CEO, said gaming gear is booming um, and he said gamers continue to purchase and upgrade their gear even as entertainment outside of the home and travel opens back up. This month they announced a fancy new 32 inch IPS 165Hz gaming monitor and a wireless gaming mouse. 
So next on my eToro portfolio update is EasyJet. I'm currently down 10.31% on this and overall in September this was down. EasyJet had a pretty bad month this month. Basically they revealed they turned down a takeover bid apparently by Wizz Air, but Wizz Air has declined to comment on this. EasyJet said they were pursuing a rights offer of 1.2 billion pounds, which is about $1.65 billion from shareholders in an attempt to help the firm weather the pandemic after its first annual loss in 25 years, in the year of 2020. EasyJet said shareholders will be able to buy 31 new shares for every 47 existing shares at a price of 410p each. EasyJet said its investors had bought 93% of the new shares on offer in its 1.2 billion pound rights issue. These shares went live on September the 28th. They also acquired a new $400 million credit line to repair its balance sheet. Since then, EasyJet has announced they are preparing to pounce on British Airways Gatwick landing slots if the UK's flag carrier fails to convince cabin crew to back sweeping short haul cutbacks. The budget airline is understood to be eyeing a raft of routes from Britain's second biggest airport, as well as French counterpart Paris Orly, after announcing plans to tap investors for cash. EasyJet also criticised the UK, saying ministers missed the boat by delaying the latest easing of travel rules until after the summer, which I kind of have to agree with a little bit, considering travel was only made easier in the UK from this week. So next on my eToro portfolio update is ADA. I'm currently down 10.16% on this, and overall in September this was down. This month, Cardano completed its Alonzo hard fork to introduce smart contract functionality, which means it will put it up against Ethereum. I said last month I wanted to buy more. I bought $100 on one of the dips at around $2.09, which is up already. I was hoping for a bigger pullback to buy more, but this doesn't appear to have happened yet. If this drops below two, I will most likely be looking to buy some more of this. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Ethereum. Uh, I'm currently down 10% on this and overall in September this was down but this is recovering now in October. There was a cool article I read this month saying apparently Ethereum in the past year settled over $6 trillion in transactions which was a 369% increase over 2020 and $1.5 trillion worth of transactions were settled in Q3 alone. Next on my eToro portfolio update is AstraZeneca. I'm down 7.77% on this one, and overall in September this was up. I've been saying I will close this one out for a while when it goes positive, and it looks like it's starting to go in that direction now. Uh, so hopefully I will finally be able to cash this one out sometime in the near future. Uh, I will keep my eyes on this one. As mentioned previously, they are doing the vaccine as a non-profit. So while it doesn't directly profit from it, the sentiment reflects on the company. There's been loads of news on AstraZeneca this month. AstraZeneca said it had submitted an, an antibody drug for emergency authorization for COVID-19 in the US after clinical trials showed it was 77% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID-19. While vaccines rely on an intact immune system to develop targeted antibodies and infection fighting cells, AstraZeneca's biotech compound contains lab-made antibodies designed to linger in the body for months to contain the virus in case of an infection. The AstraZeneca therapy, designed to last several months to a year, could protect people who do not have a strong enough immune response to COVID-19 vaccines, for instance, uh, people who are receiving chemotherapy or anti-rejection drugs after organ transplants. In good news, AstraZeneca is no longer being taken to court by the EU for its lack of delivering COVID vaccines on time and a settlement has been agreed. In Japan this month, AstraZeneca's diabetes and heart failure drug Forxica has been approved for use, which has given AstraZeneca access to millions of potential patients. This was also recently approved in the EU. Also. In Japan, they approved Safnello for systemic lupus erythematosus, a serious autoimmune disease. This month, they also reported progress with a breast cancer drug candidate, Enhertu. It said its breast cancer drug significantly reduced the risk of dying or disease progression in women with advanced disease in a large clinical trial. They also announced high level results from the Propel phase three trial of Linpaza in metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. They also announced this month they are acquiring Kalem Biosciences for $500 million. 
AstraZeneca is making this move to further its foothold in the rare disease market. They are currently developing a treatment for a rare disease called AL amyloidosis. The disease causes significant organ damage and failure that could ultimately be fatal. Approximately 20,000 people across the US, France, Germany, Italy, Spain and the UK live with this disease. So next on my eToro portfolio update is Facebook. I'm currently up 0.22% on this and overall in September this was down. Facebook has been in the news quite a bit since the start of October and it's all been pretty bad news. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp went down on Monday for six hours considering nearly half the world use at least one of their apps. The downtime was due to an internal update that went wrong and cost the company an estimated $164,000 for every minute. Either way, it really highlighted the reach of Facebook and how many individuals and businesses rely on the company. Interestingly, Telegram says it added 70 million new users during the six hour outage and apparently Signal got millions of new users also. In addition to this, the company is also facing questions from a whistleblower called Frances Hogan or if I've said that right, who tested before Congress where she claimed that Facebook put profits before user safety. The testimony was powerful enough for Senator Ed Markey, a committee member from Massachusetts, to threaten Facebook's co-founder and chief and CEO with regulatory control. Mark Zuckerberg on Tuesday dismissed the claim saying many of the claims don't make any sense, referring to the issues over safety, well-being and mental health. He was saying at the heart of these accusations is the idea that we prioritize profit over safety and well-being. That's just not true. In addition to this, there was a broader pullback among tech stocks, which with investors growing concern that inflation and raising bond yields could erode the value of future earnings. So that affected the price of Facebook also. I bought one share of this in September and I bought another one when all the bad news hit this week and when the stock price plummeted. I'm sure all this bad news will soon be forgotten and I expect Facebook to bounce back. If this does drop again, I may buy some more. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Lemonade. This is a smallish position. Uh, this is currently up 2.11% overall for me. In the past month, this has been down. Since the start of the year, this has been in decline somewhat. Lemonade took a hit in the first quarter as its gross loss ratio skyrocketed up from 72% to 121%. This was due almost entirely to the unexpected Texas deep freeze in mid-February and company officials said they received about a year's worth of claims in a few days. As a result, revenue and gross profits were down and the company had a $49 million net loss. Lemonade generates most of its revenue from homeowners and renters insurance. Unfortunately, climate change is likely to get worse over time, so these events could become more frequent in the future. So Lemonade admits this could pose a problem for them. Saying that though, the company has more than 1.2 million customers after just six years of being in business. That's up from 814,000 just a year ago. So the company is growing and while not yet profitable, it's not unusual for startups. This stock does have potential. This month, Lemonade Pet launched a new preventative care package specifically for the youngest furry family members, puppies and kittens under two years old. The new package offers coverage for important procedures like spay and neuter, microchipping, flea medication, and up to six vaccines or boosters. The $2 billion US pet health insurance industry tends to focus on coverage for accidents and illness rather than preventative care for young pets, making Lemonade's new package especially appealing for parents of young pets. So for now, Lemonade is a hold for me. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Neo. I'm currently up 2.63% on this and overall in September this was down. This has been hit pretty hard this month mainly due to the Evergrande issues but obviously there is a backdrop of other issues in China with the wariness that carried over from July where China started a regulatory crackdown on tech stocks. Basically the Evergrande scenario has put a lot of wariness into the market as a whole this month with concerns about a looming financial crisis in China which sent panic across the investing community and triggered a massive sell-off in Chinese stocks. In addition to to this at the start of September, NEO shares fell after the Chinese electric car company announced plans to sell up to $2 billion in fresh US shares. NEO said the proceeds will be used for general corporate purposes and to strengthen its balance sheet. Apparently, NEO may delay its planned Hong Kong listing to next year, according to people familiar with the matter. The US traded company filed for a second listing in Hong Kong in March, but isn't likely to debut in the Asian financial hub before early 2022. Apparently, deliberations are ongoing and NEO could still decide not to proceed with a Hong Kong listing. 
So apparently China's government announced this month that China has too many EV makers and the government will encourage the more successful companies to merge with or acquire smaller rivals. The minister Zhao Yaqing, I hope I said that right, said that while China is very enthusiastic about the development of so-called new energy vehicles, the government believes that a further concentration of resources is needed to ensure that companies can successfully develop advanced technology. And while it's unlikely NIO will be acquired, it's possible they will come under some pressure to acquire smaller rivals to support the government's policy, which would potentially divert capital from its own growth. So, but it's not all been doom and gloom this month. Um, in good news, the company also recently said it plans to launch its new ET7 luxury electric sedan in Germany by the end of 2022, which is the second country they will launch in in Europe and they released news of a new 75 kilowatt hour hybrid battery offering last week. The new battery will extend vehicle range in cold weather but will cost the same as the previous 70 kilowatt hour model. Towards the end of September, NEO announced the official commencement of deliveries of its flagship SUV ES8 in Norway. Uh, NEO also announced it will open a NEO house in Oslo in October the 1st which will be the first of its kind of showroomy club things to be opened outside China. Uh, they will also offer battery as a service in Norway, uh, which is one of the main selling points of NEO. Um, and they will build 20 power swap stations in Norway by the end of 2022, including locations in its five largest cities. And they plan to launch its service and delivery center in Oslo in October. Also at the start of October, NEO announced um, that they delivered 10,628 vehicles globally in September 2021, increasing by 125.7% year over year, which is great. Then NEO delivered 24,439 vehicles in the three months ended September 2021, increasing by 100.2% year over year. And cumulative deliveries of the ES8, ES6 and EC6 as of September the 30th, 2021 reached 142,036. So that's good news. So this is a hold for now. Next on my eToro portfolio update is KNW 500. As I've mentioned previously, I've paused copying this guy and I'm closing trades out whenever I see any go green or I'm just removing the funds if he closes the trades himself. So next on my eToro portfolio update is Microsoft. Overall, I'm up 8.29% on this. In September, this was down, but it's now starting to recover as we go into October. I mentioned previously, I would be expanding my portfolio of safer-ish stocks, and this is one I personally see as safe-ish. So I did add to this quite a bit this month, and I added six shares. This month in the news, Windows 11 was released this week on October the 5th as a free upgrade. Bear in mind, you'll need a pretty recent CPU to run it though. Um, they also announced a load of new hardware this month with eight new products for its Surface hardware lineup, including a dual screen Android smartphone, which you can see here. Microsoft also highlighted its commitment to drive sustainability and are working on becoming carbon negative, zero waste and water positive by 2030. Uh, they also debuted an ocean plastic mouse, which is made of resin composed of recycled and recovered ocean plastics. So that looks pretty cool. Earlier this month, the tech company announced an 11% increase to its quarterly dividend, which is payable on December the 9th to shareholders of record on November the 18th. The new quarterly dividend of 62 cents comes out to $2.48 annually, giving Microsoft a dividend yield of about 0.8%. In other news, Microsoft said on Tuesday it will allow Epic Games Inc. and Amazon Inc. and other firms to integrate their app stores into the technology giant's marketplace, giving more options to third-party developers. So Microsoft said that it wasn't going to take a cut from in-app purchases like Apple and Google do through their mobile app stores. This approach Microsoft is taking is designed to attract developers who may be frustrated with having to pay high commissions such as 30%, which I think is totally understandable. In September 2020, Microsoft rolled out its cloud gaming service for Xbox users across 22 markets in North America and Europe, simultaneously as part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription. And in early October, they also announced it's launched its Xbox cloud gaming service in Australia, Brazil, Japan, and Mexico, bundled with the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription. 
and gamers will be able to access more than 100 titles cloud enabled and localized as part of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription on a wide range of devices like Windows PCs, Android phones and tablets. And the service will also be available on Apple's iPhones and tablets. I may even consider adding more to this over time uh, as Microsoft and cloud computing is definitely the future. So next on my eToro portfolio update is Skyworks and I'm up 8.5% on this. In the past month, this was down. There wasn't a huge deal of news on Skyworks again. If you don't know, Skyworks make 5G chips and these are used in iPhones. Apple has equipped the newest iPhones with more 5G bands, which should lead to stronger demand for Skyworks' radio frequency filters that are used in iPhones. Skyworks is anticipating a 36% year over year revenue increase in the current quarter to $1.3 billion. I'm gonna hold this for now and keep an eye on this one. I may look to close it out and move my money elsewhere when it recovers to some of the highs it was at previously, which you can see here, it was quite a bit higher in the summer months. So I'll keep my eye on this one. Next on my eToro portfolio update is PayPal. Uh, I'm up 10.05% on this. In the past month, this was down. I actually added three and a bit shares uh, to this on the pullback. On September the 21st, CEO Dan Shulman announced some highly anticipated upgrades to PayPal's mobile app. He said, we're excited to introduce the first version of the new PayPal app, a one-stop destination for our customers to take charge of their everyday financial lives with new features like access to high yield savings, in-app shopping tools for customers to find deals and earn cashback rewards, early access direct deposit and bill pay. And these upgrades are in addition to existing capabilities like sending money to friends, making purchases with the buy now, pay later option and paying for purchases with crypto. As part of the app redesign, PayPal is rolling out a savings account without any monthly fees or minimum balance requirements. The account provided in partnership with Synchrony Bank will have a 0.4% annual percentage yield and will allow users to move money between the account and their PayPal balances. It's also expected that PayPal will introduce stock market investing into the app in the near future, putting it up against other services like Robinhood Markets. Although PayPal will certainly be late to the brokerage party, but it does have a massive user base that trumps Robinhood's 21 million active accounts. Again, I may add to this one over time. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Amazon and I'm up 12.16% on this overall. In the past month, this was down. I added another $100 to this and I will likely add more to this over time. Again, like Google, the price of an individual share is just too much for me to buy in one. So I will just buy a bit at a time. Uh, this month they announced their Astro robot, which they plan to start shipping in limited quantities to customers later this year. Uh, the company said it can be remote controlled when not at home to check on pets, people or home security. And it can also patrol a home automatically and send owners a notification if it detects something unusual. The small robot also comes equipped with an extendable periscope camera that pops up from its head. Amazon showed an example of using it to check if a gas hob had been left on after leaving the house. Uh, I mean, it, this is a start for robots in the house, but considering a lot of people have stairs in their homes, it's just not gonna work unless you buy multiple for each floor of your house. And considering the price tag is gonna be $1,449, it's definitely too much for the average consumer at this price point. If anything, they really need something like their flying drone they previously announced in robot form. Also this month, Amazon opened its first non-food retail four-star store in the UK, where there is some 2,000 products that are rated four stars or above on Amazon's website, which will be on sale at the new shop. And this could range from Lego sets, books, and pet toys to kitchen gadgets. It will obviously include a large tech section dedicated to Amazon's own devices, such as its Kindle products and smart speakers. Um, and this also allows customers to collect or return orders made on Amazon online without the need for packaging and labels. But currently the shop doesn't have the walkout technology that is seen in some of the other Amazon shops. I'm still quite keen to try out one of these Amazon walkout shops. Has anyone tried one of these yet? If so, let us know in the comments and what you think of these. Amazon has decided to start their Black Friday deals early, announcing deals on thousands of items on its stores from the first week of October. This is seen as a move to possibly alleviate strain on supply chain issues and by spreading out purchases over a longer time and they hope to reduce stress on the system. In bad news this week, Twitch, which is an Amazon owned game streaming site was hacked. Uh, apparently the hacker claimed to expose the source code and detail on payouts to its content creators. It also included a leak of Amazon's plans to launch a digital gaming distribution platform, which would compete with 
Steam. Uh, the hacker admitted the purpose of the leak was to foster more disruption and competition in the online video streaming space, which in his words he described as a disgusting toxic cesspool. But weirdly, this hasn't really affected the share price in any shape or form. So next on my eToro portfolio update is Google, and I'm up 12.62% on this. In the past month, this was down. I actually added $600 to this this month. I won't be buying a whole share in one considering they cost about $2,800-ish each. Thankfully, eToro allows buying of partial shares. This month, Google said they will add context to search results to combat misinformation, including descriptions about listed websites in its own words, reviews of sites from other parties, and information about topics from the third party sources. In the About This Result panel, uh, they also said they will redesign their search tools, making it more visual. In addition to this, Google will ban advertisements and stop funding media that contradicts scientific consensus on climate change, which is an attempt from the internet giant to stamp out environmental conspiracies. And I think this is great because while I believe in free speech, there are just some conspiracy theories which I believe hurt the world and the people who live in it. In addition to this, they are doing other things to now help combat climate change, like showing CO2 emissions on their flight finder. They also want to use AI to time traffic lights more efficiently. They tested this out in Israel in four locations and it cut fuel use and traffic delays by 10 to 20%. And it next plans to tri trial this in Rio de Janeiro. So it's really showing the powers of Google's AI. And for the first time this month, Google's DeepMind artificial intelligence unit is no longer a money loser. They have also been in court in uh, the EU over a $5 billion antitrust fine, and they are urging Europe's second highest court to scrap or reduce what Google said was not an appropriate penalty. They claim Google was fined for using its Android mobile operating system for what? rivals and cemented its dominance in general internet search from 2011. A verdict is likely to come next year. Meredith Pickford told the EU's general court, the reason why billions of people choose Google as their search tool every day is not because of an abuse of dominance, it's because it's the best, which is kind of the truth. I mean, it's pretty rare people use other search engines. I mean, hence the term go Google it. People don't say go Bing it. And apparently even Google submitted evidence in this case showing that the most common search query on Bing is actually Google, which I found pretty funny. In other news, um, Google has shelved its plans for bank accounts in their revamped pay app. Also this month, they are hosting a Pixel event on the 19th of October, where they are set to announce their new Pixel smartphone, likely to be called the Pixel 6, which they hope to take on the latest iPhone. Um, there's rumors of some other hardware, including a Pixel watch and a Pixel tab at this event. And I've personally been waiting for a decent Android smartwatch, and especially now seeing as I recently lost my other watch. Um, so fingers crossed they finally deliver one with all the bells and whistles like Apple have in their ecosystem. Again, I will likely add to this position over time. Uh, so next on my eToro portfolio update is Prototype VR. Overall, I'm up 14.71%. In September, he was down, but most traders were. Um, he has recovered some of this in October so far, and this is a long-term copy. And so far, he's on for a good year, being up 13.83%. On a separate note, I did have a browse of traders on eToro recently, and there are some people doing pretty well, so I may look to amend or add some traders I copy in the future. If you'd be interested in a video showing how I go about this process, let us know in the comments below. So next on my e eToro portfolio update is Myoshi, and I'm up 21.4% on that. In September, he had a pretty bad month down 5.47%. He has also recovered some of this so far in October, and this is a long-term copy position. So far this year, he's doing well and is up 14.69%. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Square. I'm currently up 24.52% on this overall. In the past month, this was down. I did actually add another six shares to this in September and early October, and I will likely add more to this over time. This month, Square and TikTok partnered up, which is pretty big news. They announced a new integration that will make it easy for sellers of all types and sizes to reach new customers and grow their sales online. Square times TikTok enables sellers to send fans directly from TikTok videos, ads, and shopping tabs on their profiles to products available in their existing Square online store, providing a streamlined shopping experience that retains the look and feel of their personal brand. And to take advantage of these powerful new commerce features from TikTok, TikTok for business users can now quickly and easily set up a free fully integrated Square online store and start selling right away. Considering how big TikTok is with a billion monthly active users, it's a pretty good partnership for Square. Also in September, Square announced 
Small businesses in Spain could get early access to its suite of products launching there. And on September the 21st, it announced it had officially launched in France following successes with an early access program like the one they had in Spain. In addition to this, Canada is Square's second largest international market. And this month, the company launched Square Register, which is a point of sale system. And they also launched Square Card to help small businesses manage cash flow. They also got upgraded to a buy rating by Jefferies and they raised and Jefferies raised their price target to $300 from 265. So there's lots of positive news this month for Square. They will announce their financial results for the third quarter of 2021 on Thursday, November the 4th after market close. Next on my Etoro portfolio update is Harsh Smith. For those of you who don't watch this regularly, he can't open new trades as he broke eToro's terms and conditions. So I'm just slowly removing the cash as these positions close out. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Norwegian Cruise Lines Holdings. And overall, I'm up 51.73% on this. Uh, in September, this was one stock that actually went up, as you can see here. So if you don't know, Oceana Cruise's parent company is Norwegian. This month, they set a new single day booking record. So there was obviously a lot of pent up demand for cruises. Also, Chief Executive Frank Del Rio told CNBC on Tuesday this week that Norwegian's full fleet of 28 ships will resume service by April the 1st, with 75% of its vessels returning to regular operations by year end of 2021. He was even quoted saying, pent up demand continues to be very, very strong for the sailings we've operated thus far. I won't be adding any more to this for now, as I personally think the winter months may be a test on all travel stocks again, but we shall see. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Big Tech. This is a copy portfolio uh, I got invested in in January last year. I believe in big tech doing well over the long term. This has made 53.33% overall. This had a bad September and was down 5.81% with big tech being hit pretty hard that month. Uh, this is having a slightly better October already. Either way, this year, this has made 12.82% overall and big tech is only really going to get bigger over time. I actually considered closing out of this seeing as I invest in a lot of these stocks myself, but then I decided I might as well leave it open as it gives me exposure to other big tech stocks I wouldn't normally invest in that could also do well. So for now, this is a hold. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Disney. Overall, I'm up 53.52% on this. In September, this was down. They turned 50 over last weekend and they are stretching out the golden anniversary celebration until at least the end of March of 2023. This month they announced all films slated for 2021 will debut in theaters before streaming on Disney Plus. But co-chief executive officer Bob Chapek said in September, the resurgence of the Delta variant of, of the Roni Rona was delaying production of some of its titles. They opened a new restaurant this month in Epcot in Florida called Space 220, which makes it look like you're actually in space while dining. It has some pretty high prices with lunch starting at $55 and $79 for dinner, which is good news for shareholders, but bad news for park guests. But either way, apparently within minutes, the first 60 days of availability sold out, which is crazy. Prices have been increasing sharply across Disney World parks and people are actually paying this. Their plan of fewer guests paying more seems to be working for now. Uh, in addition to this, this month, the CEO said dividends won't be returning anytime soon, which is a shame. Um, at Disney's recent presentation, he also said Disney Plus subscriber growth is slowing. Chapek blames headwinds from Roni Rona related production delays on new content. He also said people are returning to the theme parks and September has seen an uptick in visits and naturally things will only heat up at Disney World as new rides and experiences greet guests from October as the resort celebrates turning 50. And this will also be boosted by the fact that travel restrictions are now being reduced. Disney announced they will work with Amazon to launch a custom voice assistant called Hey Disney. The new Disney branded Hey Disney personality unlocks an interactive Disney experience on Echo. Users will be able to use the Hey Disney wake up word to interact with characters from Disney, Pixar, Marvel and Star Wars characters, including Mickey, Dory and Olaf. Besides related jokes, stories, interactive trivia and greetings, as well as special surprises centered around beloved Disney characters. If you ever need entertainment for your kids, then that is it right there. They will announce fiscal full year and fourth quarter 2021 financial results on November the 10th. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Jay Nemesis. In September, he was down 6.33%. So far this year though, he has gained 18.75%. As mentioned before, if you don't copy Jay already, then unfortunately you will be unable to as he was or is the most popular PI on eToro. 
Next on my eToro portfolio update is Wesley. Overall, I'm up 58.34%. Uh, in September, he was down 3.67%. And Wesley is not actually having the best year with only being up 2.41%. Like I said earlier, I may start to rearrange some of my copy positions. He has done well in the past, but we shall see how things go in the near future because there are a lot of other traders currently performing quite a bit better than him. So I'll keep my eye on him for now. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Royal Caribbean Cruisers. Um, I'm up 68.29% on this. In September, again, this was one of the only stocks that was up. Not a huge deal of news on this one this month. They announced the world's larger cruise ship, Wonder of the Seas, will debut in the US and Europe. The highly anticipated ship is set to sail from its home in Fort Lauderdale to the Caribbean on March the 4th, 2022, before making its way to Barcelona and Rome to kick off summer vacations in May. This is a hold till we emerge fully out of the pandemic. Like I said before, winter will test some of the travel stocks, but as we emerge out the other side of the pandemic, I hope these will do well. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Liam Davies. This is the smallest of all of my copies. Uh, overall, he is up 73.68%. And this year, he is up 32.44%. In September, like everyone else, he was down and he was down by 4.73%, but he has recovered 3.67% of this already in October, mainly due to him being heavily invested in cryptos and from the cryptos rallying. This is a copy position open for the long term. If anyone can recommend any other good traders to copy who trade cryptos, please let me know in the comments below as I would love to know. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Netflix. This is one of my smallest and oldest copy positions and I'm up 87.78% on this currently. This was again one of the only stocks up in September. The stock is currently riding around all time highs. Um, this has been boosted by Squid Game, which if you haven't seen it yet, then I highly recommend you go check it out. It's quality stuff. Netflix are now selling merchandise for the show, and apparently they installed that huge doll from the first episode as a marketing stunt outside a mall in the Philippines. <laughs> That's one way to scare the shit out of people <laughs> and to turn people and to make people not want to go in a shopping mall. In September, Netflix acquired the Roll Doll Story Company, which means Netflix will have the exclusive rights to develop films and TV shows in Roll Doll's work. Apparently, Netflix is also working on an adaptation of Matilda with Sony. This month, they also bought video game creator Night School Studio, and they launched five mobile gaming titles in select European markets. Night School Studio is Netflix's first gaming studio purchase. The company was founded in 2014 and best known for its debut game, Oxen Free. Netflix says the games will be included as part of people's memberships with no ads or in-app purchases. For now, this is a hold. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Light or Signify. Overall, I'm up 89.36% on this. In September, this actually took quite a tumble, um, as you can see here. Uh, there's not a huge deal of news from these guys this month, but as always, it's hard to find news on this company. I may add to this over time as soon as the prices come down. Um, I'll keep an eye on this one. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Tesla. Um, this is my biggest position in my portfolio. I'm up 97.1% on this. Um, this had an amazing September and was up. As you know, I'm massively bullish on Tesla. I'm regretting not buying more shares of this back in May when it dipped to around 550 a share, but my portfolio was already heavily invested towards Tesla at the time. We're now at just under $800 a share. Last week, they delivered a record-breaking 241,300 vehicles in the third quarter. This was up 73.2% from last year and nearly 20% higher than the 201,250 reached in the second quarter. This blew past expectations, especially considering other automakers experienced a drop because of the global chip shortage. And in my personal opinion, you would suspect an electric car company to likely have more chips than an ice vehicle. Apparently the percentage of stock borrowed by traders, uh, which is a standard measure of short interest has slumped to 1.1% of Tesla shares available for trading. And that's the lowest since 2010 when the car maker went public. So it's a sign that the shorts are starting to give up on this now, which is great. There was some bad news this month where a former Tesla contract worker was awarded $137 million in damages because of racial abuse he suffered there. They had their annual meeting this week where Elon unveiled plans to move the headquarters from California to Texas, which is where it's developing a gigafactory and the home of SpaceX. This follows Musk's own personal move to Texas and after rows between Musk and the California authorities over issues including safety, taxes, and COVID-19 precautions. 
But Musk did say he plans to still boost production in California by 50% in the coming years. Tesla also aims to make the Model Y the best-selling car of any kind by 2023. I also found out this month you can actually put a deposit down on the Cybertruck in the UK. This is pretty tempting, but at the same time, it doesn't have the UK costs on their website. And currently Tesla's cost way more in the UK than they do in the US. So if I do very well in the stock market, perhaps I'll consider one of these. We shall see. So next on my eToro portfolio update is AMD. I'm up 99.28% on this. In the past month, this was down. Uh, there is a market expectation that the chip shortage will continue for the first half of 2022, but it should ease up in the second half of the year. This month, AMD have set a goal to increase energy efficiency of processors running AI training and high performance computing applications for, by 30 times by 2025. Also this month it was announced that Google Cloud is expanding its use of AMD Epic processors. The preview of N2D virtual machines powered by AMD Epic 7003 series processors. According to Google Cloud, this delivers on average over 30% better price performance across a variety of workloads compared to the previous generation of AMD Epic processors based N2D instances. Apparently AMD is benefiting from strong demand for these Epic processors thanks to adoption from companies like Microsoft, Hewlett Packard and Google. The company's Epic processors have been used in developing a number of high performance computing systems. These include Microsoft Azure supercomputers for the UK's Met Office and the Singapore National Supercomputing Center Supercomputer. This stock shot up quite considerably at the end of July and start of August and has pulled back a bit since. I will probably be looking to buy more of this if it pulls back a bit further. Next on my eToro portfolio update is Apple. Overall, I'm up 206.17% on this. In the past month, this was down. Uh, this is again another small position which I've had open for years and I may add to it at some point, but I would like it to pull back more before I do. Apple's CarPlay, which is used by a few auto manufacturers, is planning to expand its functionality and access additional functions like the climate control system, speedometer, radio, and seats. Currently, CarPlay doesn't let users control any aspect of the car itself, although this is still in its early stages of development. Also this week, Apple said they will appeal a judge's ruling in its fight with Epic Games, uh, ordering them to stop blocking developers from letting users complete in-app purchases on the web. It also asked the judge to put her December 9th deadline for the App Store changes on hold during the appeal. If this is allowed, it would mean business as usual for Apple for at least another year. Also this month, the iPhone 13 was released, but customers face wait times of up to six weeks because of a shortage of key components and as soaring costs hit businesses around the world. They started taking orders for its new smartwatch on Friday of this week, but again, supply constraints mean that some consumers won't get their hands on the products for nearly two months. Apparently they are set to announce the new MacBook Pros in the coming weeks and possibly even some new AirPods. I'm looking forward to getting one of these MacBooks personally, but again, I've read there is likely to be supply chain issues and delays. So next on my eToro portfolio update is the in the game copy portfolio. I'm up 206.17% on this. In September, this was actually down by 5.99%, obviously due to technology companies being hit the hardest. This is a long-term hold and I won't be cashing this out as I only see the gaming industry getting bigger over time. Now, last but not least is Bitcoin and this is up 439.79%. And this had a great month breaking through the 50K barrier again. Uh, this is currently around the 55k mark-ish at the time of recording this video. But by the time I edit this, this could be anywhere as we all know how volatile cryptos are. In the past week, this rallied 24% hitting a four month high ahead of this weekend. Analysts predict cryptocurrencies are going to soar in the last quarter of 2021, but we shall see. As mentioned previously, this is a long term hold. If it drops considerably, I may look to buy more, but not at the price point it's currently at. So that's it for my September update video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let us know what you think of these portfolio update videos and if you'd like me to change or include anything additional in them. A huge amount of effort goes into these portfolio update videos and I always want to make content you guys enjoy. So if you enjoy it, then please let us know. Or if you'd rather I talk about something else, also please let us know in the comments. Also, if you do enjoy this video, then please smash the like button as I really appreciate it as it really helps support the channel massively. If you've got any questions on this video, then please let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you've been buying or selling this month. Would you like to see a video on stocks I'm considering buying over the coming months? I'd love to know and I read all your comments.
Also, for those of you interested in signing up to eToro and haven't already, then there is an affiliate link down below where if you do sign up using it, then I will get a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support this channel. So why not give eToro a go before depositing any real money as they will give you a demo account with $100,000 of virtual money where you can experience all of the features like copy trading without losing any real money. Also, if you want to learn more about how eToro works or more about personal finance or investing, I have numerous videos on my channel, so I recommend you go check them out. So please subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future updates. It's been Ollie from Get Geek Finance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.